All right, here we go, folks. Uh, welcome back to the program. You know, uh, you know, on this uh, send her back chant with Elon Omar, and everyone again on social media is freaking out. Um, I, listen, I think Greg Gutfeld has actually the best take on this. He said, "Pure mob insanity?" Question mark. Apparently, you've never been to a sporting event. So if you—that's a good point. I mean, we like to take our politics so seriously, but I mean, um, think of—I mean, from a sporting event angle. You know, a lot of people say things that they mean, but they maybe phrase them a way they'd never, they, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Uh, it, it is fascinating. And, and listen, um, I know everyone feels the need to, you know, to point out that we shouldn't do that because she's a, like, for example, Guy Benson, uh, send her back is an appalling chant. Omar's a U.S. citizen. My less catchy chant would be condemn her bigotry, combat her radicalism, and investigate her seriously alleged fraud. Uh, yeah, definitely. We were just going over all of that. I bet at the same time, I mean, somebody on my Facebook wrote, well, I mean, is it possible that she could be sent back if they, you know, actually look at the evidence and criminal charges are brought up? I, I'm not really sure. Folks, I, I'd like to actually talk about, uh, kind of expand on this, the anti-Semitic comments from the left. I want to welcome to the program, we have uh, Mr. David Rubin. Uh, is with us. David is uh, the former mayor of Shiloh, Israel. He's on the phone this morning. David, how are you, sir? I'm fine. Good to be with you. Um, David, uh, you are also the author of the book Trump and the Jews. Uh, what's that book about, sir? <laughs> hmm. Well, the book Trump and the Jews is uh, is about exactly what it says, Trump and the Jews, the relationship <laughs> between Trump and 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 uh, and the Jewish people, Israel, uh, the the charges of anti-Semitism, incredibly against him, uh, along with uh, the, an examination of who the real anti-Semites are. And 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 w so, what was the motivation? That was the motivation then to expose who are the real anti-Semites and who are they, in your opinion? Uh, well. Look, the, the, we, we, we always knew that there were some neo-Nazis and anti-Semites on the far right, but uh, there, there are actually very few in numbers, uh, whereas the anti-Semitism in the far left is growing in leaps and bounds, and there are quite a number of members of Congress who definitely would fit the definition of an anti-Semite. Uh, and, and it's very troubling. It's not just the, those four Congresswomen. It's, it's also those uh, on the far left, uh, quite a few members of the Congressional Black Caucus. And, you know, this is all very troubling, but it's the reality. And, and President Trump, uh, you know, it's kind of fascinating about the criticism of President Trump by some of the more liberal Jews, uh, who, who many of whom have called him anti-Semitic. Uh, you know, which is absolutely absurd because uh, he actually has stronger connections in many ways with the Jewish people than some of these liberal Jews do. Uh, you know, and, and I, I hear he's really popular in Israel. Is that true? He is wildly popular. Um, <clears throat> and, and it goes across the political spectrum, too. It's not just those on the right. Uh, and it's not just those at the center, it's a, and it also includes a lot of Israelis on the left. And the reason for that is, is very simple. He has done more than any president in American history to strengthen the relationship between Israel and the United States. It's, it's just uh, it's that simple. Uh, meanwhile, I, I saw this. Again, we're talking with David Rubin. He's the former mayor of Shiloh, Israel. He's the author of a book, Trump and the Jews. You need to check it out. I'm going to talk about um, his organization here in just a minute. But you're, meanwhile, this is uh, the, the Twitter war that's been going on between Donald Trump and really the Democrats all week. Um, he's also calling out the entire party because now the party it seems to be embracing their far left anti-Semitic fringe, uh, which is also, you know, socialist. Uh, then you got Joe Biden. You got Pete, uh, Pete uh, uh, Butt Edge Edge, as Trump called him last night. Uh, criticizing Israeli, quote, occupation. What do you think about that, David? Yes, in a, in a minute, uh, Pete Buttigieg will be accusing us of 
homophobia uh, if I criticize him. Uh, look, the, you know, there, there are people there on the far left of the Democratic Party, and unfortunately they're becoming the, the core of the Democratic Party because everyone else is afraid of them because they're so aggressive. Uh, but the, instead of looking at the content of what President Trump says or what President Trump does, uh, they, they just call names, you know, call everyone a racist, and they'll invent new diseases like Islamophobia and homophobia, and, you know, and soon there'll be a, a new disease called people of color of phobia. Uh, it, it's just ridiculous. It, it, it makes absolutely no sense. And pre- President Trump has just been doing a great job, and and he's, you know, just look at, I look at things in his foreign policy where he's been consistent, where he's uh, strengthened ties with, with true allies of the United States. He has forged new alliances such as Israel and Saudi Arabia and, and a couple of other um, Arab countries that uh, heretofore did not have a great relationship with Israel. And uh, it's an alliance uh, against the threat from Iran. Uh, so he, he's just done a lot of very great things mm-hmm. in foreign policy. And that, that's not even to get into uh, the tremendous job he's done with the American economy. Uh, but uh, the, these Democrats, they have no substance to what they're saying. And uh, the ones that are more moderate, like perhaps Joe Biden, uh, they're, they're running scared. They're, they're afraid of their own shadows. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm glad that you brought up the uh, alliance with Saudi Arabia and Israel because that's certainly something that uh, the mainstream media will never, ever uh, talk about or, you know, give the president any credit for that at all. Um, and mainly because maybe they don't want to acknowledge what a threat Iran actually is or how the last administration, uh, you know, we're, we're cutting these, these deals that make absolutely no sense. Um, again, we're talking with David Rubin, the former mayor of Shiloh, Israel. He's the author of the book Trump and the Jews. Now, Rubin uh, or David, you, you're also the founder and uh, president of uh, Shiloh Israel Children's Fund. Now, this was established after you and your then three-year-old son were wounded in a terror attack. Tell us about that, sir. Well, we were wounded when we were coming back from Jerusalem. I was driving my car. My son was sitting behind me in the baby seat. As you said, he was three years old. And and uh, halfway home, the car is suddenly ambushed by Islamic terrorists from the Palestinian Authority. They were on the side of the road with AK-47 assault rifles shooting at my car. And the car went completely dead when the bullets hit. I got shot in the leg. My son... We later found out uh, had gotten shot in the head, and the bullet that went through into his head and through his neck missed his brain stem by one millimeter. Mm. But there was a long recovery period after that, and you know, thank God we were able to finally uh, get the car moving and got away from the terrorists. Uh, but after our two years or so of, of recovery and post uh, post trauma. Uh, psychological counseling uh, for my son. Uh, we, uh, yeah, I realized that something had to be done with this, you know, because no, nothing like that happens for no good reason. There, there has to be a good thing that comes out of everything. And uh, I had a vision of a therapeutic educational campus for children that have suffered from terrorism. And uh, that's what has come to fruition. That's the Shiloh Israel or Shiloh Israel Children's Fund. And we have over 2,000 children on one campus. And they, they have formal therapy. There is informal therapy. There are all kinds of educational programs. And we are truly restoring some of the lost innocence of childhood for these victims of the, the Islamic terrorism. So, given that context, um, and by the way, thank you for for making something you know positive. Um, what was what was meant for evil being now used at, for good? Uh, thank you for that. But giving that context of that trauma and that tragedy, uh, bringing it back to what the Democrats are being forced to embrace right now, which are anti-Semitic comments, which when it comes to the case of Ilhan Omar, uh, are rooted in a. Uh, 
um, Muslim Islamic worldview. Um, and it's the same worldview, uh, if we, you know, if we're honest, the, the same worldview that those people with AK 47s had on the road that day when they shot at you, sir. So, I mean, this, this isn't just politics. This, this is, this is real, isn't it? Yes, it's very real. And it's, uh, you know, if it was only me and my son, uh, then we could say perhaps it's a fluke. But there are thousands of Israeli civilians that have been killed or wounded in terrorist attacks in recent years. And uh, the same the same terrorists, uh, the, the terrorists that, that tried to kill us and that killed and wounded so many others, you know, they're, they're from the same ideology as those terrorists uh, uh, who killed and wounded all the others, and and they're the same ideology as terrorists uh, that attacked the twin towers in 9/11. So, you know, this is the, so when, when when you have somebody coming into Congress, uh, two in the, two individuals who adhere to that same ideology and don't hesitate to preach it, that's something that's very frightening. But it's more disturbing when the leadership of the Democratic Party doesn't have the guts to stand up, doesn't have the, the, the courage to stand up and denounce it unequivocally, unequivocally in, in a, a state of the Congress resolution. Uh, you know, when they tried to pass their resolution, uh, the... They, they, they didn't have the courage to, to stand up with it, and they, they didn't have the courage to stand against the criticism of the far left uh, that was saying, no, you can't condemn anti-Semitism unless you also condemn all these these other, uh, uh, you know, so-called bigotries and, the, and these other so-called diseases, uh, you know, psychological diseases, mm -hmm. and you know, as long as you're being accused of those things, it's hard to respond. You're exactly right. We're talking again with David Rubin, the former mayor of Shiloh or Shiloh, Israel, author of the book Trump and the Jews. You should check it out. Also check out uh, his uh, fund, his uh, uh, Shiloh Israel Children's Fund. Um, David, I got one more question for you. And feel feel free to, you know, I, I don't, I think it's true because, I mean, I've seen photos of it on the internet, but I just don't know how popular it actually is. So, Somebody showed me a coin that um, is being made or manufactured in Israel from what from what the reports that I read that has Donald Trump's face on it, along with, uh, I guess, uh, King Cyrus's face on it. And is that are you familiar with that at all? Uh, certainly. Uh, what's, the the meaning, what's, has, what's the meaning behind that, and and, and why are the uh, you know Israeli people uh, comparing Trump to Cyrus? Well, I, I actually made that comparison in my book, Trump and the Jews. Uh, for for those people who who you know don't know that much Bible, uh, they in in Jewish history there there was a a character named King Cyrus, the King Cyrus of Persia. And he was a Persian king. He wasn't Jewish, uh, but I, I consider him to be an important part of Jewish history because because when after the first temple was destroyed in Jerusalem uh, about 2,500 years ago, he almost single-handedly financed the rebuilding of that holy temple in Jerusalem. Uh, he stood with the Jewish people in their time of need. And President Trump, you know, we could say the same thing about him, uh, especially after the, those eight horrible years of Obama when, when uh, the relationship with Israel was terrible and all he did was give lectures to our prime minister and, and uh, you know, he forced uh, a building freeze on us where, where we weren't even allowed uh, to build, a, to expand a room in a home, uh, because that didn't fit Obama's ideology of of, uh, the, of the way he saw things here. Uh, but Trump has been tremendous. He has just just been tremendous from moving the embassy to Jerusalem, 
getting the United States out of the Iran deal, uh, stopping the payments to the Palestinian Authority until they stop paying the terrorists. Uh, so everyone likes Trump here. Everything he's doing is a great job. Now, okay, so I noticed that was the last question. On the back of that coin it, it, it is the image of another temple, right? I don't know. I haven't seen the actual coin, but I, I have heard about it. Okay, okay, okay. Well, yeah. That... But, but, but in terms of the, the, the temple itself, obviously King Cyrus is known for his right. assistance in rebuilding that second temple. That's uh, fantastic. Very, it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Uh, and uh, David Rubin, we really appreciate you coming on the program this morning and spending some time with us uh, and wish you the best of luck, sir. I'd love to do it again sometime. Well, thank you very much. All right. Enjoyed it. Yes, sir. Enjoyed it as well. An honor to meet you. David Rubin, everybody, former mayor of Shiloh, Israel, author of the book Trump and the Jews. Check it out.